Okay? That's from past history. So let me give you um, three and four in your hypothesis testing procedure, and that, that is this. Well, if you, if you have a parameter, and we're gonna, I'm going to start, start off with, with, um, with two parameters. If this is about a proportion, okay, this hypothesis concerns a proportion. Well, what's a proportion anyway? Yeah, what's a proportion? It's the number of successes divided by the total number of whatever, right? Sample, right? So when you take a sample here, you need an x value, number of successes. You need a sample size. And that you compute a sample proportion. Is that right? Well, here's your test statistic. The test statistic is p hat minus p over the square root of p 1 minus p divided by n. This is your test statistic formula when you have a hypothesis test about a proportion. P hat. Where do you get P hat? P hat is from your what? Sample information. That's right. Where do you get N? That's from your sample. And where is this P from? This is going to be from your, um, this is going to be from your setup. Setup of the hypothesis. And if the test is about a mean, okay, you go out and you collect your data, x is your uh, arbitrary data values. Okay, n is the sample size. x bar is the sample mean. S is a sample standard deviation, and here your test statistic is going to look like x bar minus mu over S divided by the square root of n. This is a test statistic about a mean. Okay. Now this x bar, again, that's from your what? Sample. This n is from the what? Sample. This s is from the sample. This mu is from your hypothesis. This is um, both step three and four, meaning when you go take a sample, you're gathering data. And then you're going to make some sense with that data. You gather data. So data is about a proportion. You compute your sample proportion. This is the associated test statistic. You gather data, arbitrary data values. You have a sample size. Compute a sample mean, sample standard deviation. This is the associated test statistic. So this is from your sample. So we're talking about those two steps at the same time. Yes. Yes. The first is for a proportion, and the second is for a what? A mean. So if you guys notice, all of our examples this morning were either about proportions or means. I didn't even start to talk about hypothesis testing with variance or standard deviation yet. I just want to get you guys started. There's more. Hmm. Actually, it's very, very, very. I had, I had discussions this week with a committee on campus who's gathering data, and they're doing it in a very bad way. So you have a lot of use of this. This is, knowledge is power, and this is where, this is where there's power. 
Because when people start making arbitrary statements of stuff without any evidence, it means nothing. And when you start to make decisions, good decisions, you need the evidence. So this is probably the most important stuff you'll ever have. Yeah? Um, the mean on the bottom it says is the sample divided by n? Uh, no, s is what? The sample standard deviation. And that's divided by the square root of n. I mean, yeah. Oh, yes. It's used everywhere. I mean, I have a, I have a, um, who do I, I have a cousin. He works for um, that Fox Sport Network, the football Monday, uh, the Sunday morning football show, whatever that is. Um, Christopher Saldana. I'm sorry, no, Matthew. That's his brother, Matthew. He works for this, um, that show. And you guys know that you hear commentators, all these sport commentators talk about, you know, you listen to them, they have all these interesting facts about certain situations and say, ah, on this count, 0 and 2 count, you know, usually the pitcher does this and this is the success. And it's interesting to see what he does here. You hear all that information? Those sportscasters are just personalities. The brains behind them, there's a team. And they feed them all this what? information and they're really not as smart as you thought so there's they have a team of brains and so you know they gather all this data they keep track of a lot of stuff so when people say well what well, could I use math for I can't you there's there's a whole world out there I know I know but but you may know that but other people may not well, we, yeah, right. Oh, yeah, we all knew it was a joke. Okay? But there's, this is probably, again, like I said, I won't go into the details of that because we got a lot to do, but the discussion this week was based completely on what we're talking about now. And the resentment of the math department was because we teach this for a living. You know, so where the strengths of one discipline end, the strengths of another begin. And so lawyers are great. Language artists are great. They can do a lot of stuff, but then where their strengths end, that's where we come in and we can actually augment that strength. And that's really how things work or should work um, because you don't want to hire certain people to come into school, ask certain, you know, you don't want them to just say, how about this? What if they just ask students questions? Let me tell you, let me, let me just remark about this. I think we've talked about this. What if you bring people in to ask students questions between the hours of 9 and 12? What's wrong with that procedure? You're not testing the evening students. And you're also soliciting, the, soliciting responses of people who only choose to what? To reply. It doesn't matter. If you ask the general population a question, how do you think, and you say, how do you think, and only two people respond, can you say that those two people reflect the class? No. Like they no. They, re no, they don't represent everybody as a whole. They represent only those two people. So you can't draw a picture based on those two people. In other words, it even says it on these internet surveys, the results are those of people who have chosen to what? Respond. So it could be a lot of things. It could be, should Barry be in the Hall of Fame? And you hear this overwhelming outpour of people who choose to respond, no. That's not, it has nothing to do with how everybody feels. The population is that of those who have chosen to respond. It is not of those of people in general. Okay? And you can't get a clear picture of asking students from 9 to 12. What about the evening students? What about Saturday students? And then it breaks down in age group. It breaks down in age group. And you're saying, well, you're only going to be in one location. You're going to be in front of the, you know, you're going to be where it's convenient for you. What about the different locations? You know, so there's a way to go about to do this. You have to do this in a random way. And you have to get a response from people. Okay? There has to be some sort of response. You can't just say, uh, this, this, this is the picture. And then it's just case studies. It's just a case study. Somebody's opinion. And you can just throw it out. It's very flimsy. Okay? You wouldn't win a court case that way. 
Okay, it'll go down in flames. So this procedure, yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, let's take a look at an example. Whew. Yeah, we're going to do, yes, we're going to do each one. We're going to do each one of these. I just need more board, board space. I just need to start walking on that side of the room. Huh? Um, can I erase, I guess we'll try to do it here. Can I erase, I'm going to erase this stuff here. You guys have this in your notes? But that's, a, you know, that's an even, that's even a job that, you know, my cousin, he flies wherever there's a football game, he has to fly out there. No, he's a part of that team that, for the show, you know. So he has to fly out there and, um, you know. Yeah, he has to go to the suit. Yeah, he went to the Super Bowl, all that stuff. And I mean, I, I don't really, I'm not a fan of football, so it doesn't really matter. You know, it doesn't matter. But yeah, that's, that's the thing about it. He, what, who has he met? He's met all these people. You know, he doesn't bug them. And Eddie, you want to know what, what um, they use to edit the show? Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro. So they hire these editors that work like 20 hours editing. You know, got all these editors. Says so all you know. You know how much they make? Hundred dollars an hour. <laughs> Final Cut Pro, Ed. So if you pass the Final Cut Pro and then the Advanced Final Cut Pro, where can we take these courses? Talk to me later. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty tough to edit. You guys don't. You got to be fast too. You got to be good. You gotta be good. They, they're not gonna tell you to be on the internet for, um, you know, half the time. Editing is a pretty intense experience. You gotta know how to use the tool. You gotta work fast. And then someone comes in and says, "I don't like that." Change it. Ah, change it. Oh my God! You gotta be able to, you know. So there's this concept called workflow. That you have to be very good with shortcuts on the keyboard. Not just okay. You're gonna use your mouse. <laughs> no. You gotta be shortcuts. You got that. You have to be one with that system and that software. Because time is money, and these producers come in and go, I don't like that. Change it. Oh, you know what? It was better before it was. Put it back. My, uh, color my, uh, oh, let's change it again. Oh, no, put it back. So you have a whole day of that. My uh, friend's boyfriend does that for Fox for the uh, fix play. You know, they show the replay. Mm. So yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. You know, and of course, like any job, it's something you may not really truly what well, like after a while. <laughs> Okay, the proportion of students who are female is greater than 0.5. So I'm going to write this down. Um, you're going to see this statement. Here's an example. The proportion of students who are female is greater than Point five. Okay. A sample of one hundred and twenty students reveals that seventy five are female. Use the 5% level of significance to test this claim. A sort of very condensed version of a typical question. A hypothesis test about a proportion. So step, what is the first step? First step is your setup. What's your setup? Well, didn't we already know that what? P is greater than 0.5. Wasn't that your first example this morning? You guys recognize that statement? So when you do your setup, you're going to say, OK, 
you have a null and you have an alternate hypothesis. You guys got through telling me that this was an alternate. So this is going to be P greater than 0.1. 